Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. And I want to thank Carolyn for supporting the show that way. In addition, you can become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Thank you to Larry and to Tom, each coming on board at the uh, Seamus level of $4 or more per month. And thank you to Dave, uh, who is moving his uh, support level up from the uh, Seamus level to the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much again for your support. Now we're going to get into The Man Called X. And we have a previously uncirculated episode uh, from the 1947 season. This was actually the sixth episode that aired over CBS. Original air date, May the 8th, 1947. And this one is The Mystery of the Indian Legend. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. And it is this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. No one else can make a Frigidaire. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Oftentimes on a morning with spring and full bloom and summer just around the corner, a person may find himself entirely at peace with the world and in a mood that calls for nothing less than whistling out loud. Or at least that's the way Ken Thurston feels approaching the entrance of the bureau offices. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, no. Peg on Zellschmidt, and it was such a beautiful morning. It was? Mr. Thurston, I have been waiting here for, for you since the dawn of sunrise. I wish I'd known it. Well, I, I would like to volunteer the benefit of my services in return for a slight... Consider- no, no, sorry, Pagan. This morning, I haven't the slightest need for a single one of your dubious talents. But, Mr. Thurston, if you would only tell me what is it you're working on, I could... Uh, I know. What? You could work up an angle for yourself. No sale. So long, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, I shall sleep right here on this doormat until you come to your senses. Better turn it over, Pagan. You'll have welcome printed all over you. Good morning, Mr. Thurston. Well, good morning, Miss Book. Well, well... Of course, it could be due to spring, but uh, why haven't I noticed you before? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Mr. Thurston. I, I've noticed you all winter. I don't suppose the chief would consider letting you... No, no, of course not. It's a nice idea, though. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. Pringle said you'd want to see this teletype as soon as you came in. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, uh-uh. That settles it. Chief in yet? Uh, yes. Shall I tell him you're here? He'll figure it out when I walk in on him. Oh, hello, Ken. Pull up a chair. Chief, I decided to take a vacation. <laughs> Good idea, Ken. I wish you could. No chance of it right now, though. I'm going to spend it at a place out west called the Mount Kaya Valley. Great fishing in the river there. 
till like it was seven years ago. Sounds all right, Ken. Maybe in a couple of months. I used to stay at a little guest ranch run by a man named Mead Stewart. I wired him this morning and told him to expect me tomorrow or the next day. Must be something wrong with the acoustics in here. I swear, I said very distinctly, no vacation. All right, I'll stop beating about the bush. It's not a vacation, it's a hunch. Yeah. Take a look at this item from one of the Rocky Mountain papers. Huh? Oh, the forest fire, which has raged for the past 36 hours in isolated to Maltai Valley, is now reported in control. Two small ranch houses, several resort cabins destroyed. The cause of the fire has not been determined. Well? Here's a couple more about the same thing. Three bad fires in less than a month. All in a valley not more than ten miles long by three miles wide. Well, not too bad, but where do we come in? Chief, take a look at this teletype that came in this morning. Let's see it. First reports from the disastrous fire which swept through the youth rehabilitation camp in Tabalkai Valley last night. State that Camp Director Neil Wright was able to rescue nine of the boys. However, 23 youths between the ages of nine and 14 perished in the flame. Good Lord, Ken. Yeah. Kids from the slums getting the first break they'd ever had in their lives. Well, Chief. I'll start a girl working on an airline reservation. No, better still, get me a plane I can fly myself. I'll leave tonight, pick up gas, Kansas City, be at Meade's Ranch tomorrow afternoon. Called it a little valley, Mr. Thurston. That looks very big to me. That's the way they build them out here, Pago. Now, there ought to be a spot to land just north of the ranch. Yes, there it is. Here we go. Hang on to your hat. Look, over there, at the bottom of the hill. It's a gold mine. That's only a test tunnel. They consider building a dam here once. Oh. Hang on, Pago. Looks like it may be rough. All right, now, Pagan. I want this plane staked down tight. Looks as though a storm may be coming up. I'll be happy to help you. Help me. I'm going up to the ranch. But, Mr. And bring the luggage up when you've finished with the plane. Oh! I'm Jean Wagner. We've been expecting you. Oh, then you're, you're in charge of the press? Hardly. The foreman is a person by the name of Clayman. I'm staying in one of the cabins. Isn't Mead here? He'll be out some time later. Well, I can't say that I'm mine. Under the circumstances. Of course, by that you mean that I'm prettier than Mr. Stewart is. Something along those lines. Well, then it's, it's only fair to warn you that I'm a lady scientist, Mr. Thurston. An archaeologist, to be exact. You may run now. Oh, no, at the moment I'm awfully interested in archaeology. The ancient Tamalkai Indians didn't leave a great many ruins here in the valley, Mr. Thurston. No, it seems that oversight is being remedied lately. Oh, you mean the forest fires? Yes, they've been yeah. horrible. I'd, uh, I'd rather not talk about them, if you don't mind. Do you know Neil Wright? Yes, of course. He's director of the boys' camp. As long as there was one, anyway. Oh, I can still see those boys. Twenty-three of them burned to death without a chance. And they'd been so happy, too, the first opportunity they ever had to be outdoors. So terrible. Oh, let's not talk about it. You know what I could find, right? Here at the ranch tomorrow. He's moving into one of the cabins. You know, I find you a rather strange person, Mr. Thurston. Oh, in what way? Mead said you were coming out to fish. But you haven't asked a single question about fishing. All right, how is it? That depends, Mr. Thurston, on what you're fishing for. Here we are, Peg, huh? Oh, is this the cabin, Mr. Thurston, number three? That's what Miss Wagner said. Matter of fact, you said it was right next door to hers. Uh-huh. So that's the way it is. Well, now I can see it all. You can see a great deal more than I can, then. Yes, yeah, take the bags inside. Okay. Well, wait a second. There must be a light switch here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Jack, be gone. Look out. 
Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, what is it? About six feet of sudden death, Pagan. Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake? He don't look very dead yet. He is dead, all right. About as dead as you'd have been if you'd taken one more step. Oh, Mr. X, maybe we could go someplace else for a vacation, hmm? What's going on in here? Been holding target practice? No, just evicting the former tenant. Yeah. Rattler, huh? Bad business, Rattler. I suppose you're Thurston? That's right. I'm Louis Clayman. I run the place. For Mead Stewart, of course. Oh, you? You'd have told me you was here. I'd have had the cabin swept out. Oh, that's all right. I like surprises. Funny things, Rattlers. Never know where one will turn up. Yeah. Even in a room with a concrete floor, plastered walls, steel casement windows, and a closed door. Mr. Clayman, you have some very clever animals around here. <laughs> I couldn't get out from town earlier, Ken. That's okay, Mead. I found things interesting enough. There you are. One martini with onions. You've got a good memory. Well, here's the fish as they were seven years ago. Yeah. Everything as it was seven years ago. In trouble, me? Uh, not yet, but... Well, you heard of the fires we had. Yeah. I understand the last one was pretty rough. Ken, it was the worst tragedy I've ever seen. Those kids burned to death in their bunks without a chance. Other things, too. Pretty much got me on the ropes, Ken. What do you mean? Well, since you were out here before, I made a little money on some mining stock, Mexican silver. So I made loans to pretty near everybody in the valley. Took notes on their land to secure the money. And these fires come along. Uh Uh-huh. Seven different families have pulled out already, leaving me with nothing but a piece of worthless land. And there's more going, even some that haven't been burned out. And their land is... Worthless to me is the rest because no one will buy it. Everybody's beginning to get the idea there's some kind of jinx on the valley. Mead, have you ever thought that maybe someone might be doing this deliberately? No, Ken, I'd like to think it was that simple. How long has Miss uh, Wagner been staying here? Oh, about three months. Say, you'll find her interesting when you get to know her, Ken. Well, I find her interesting even without knowing her. Uh, there'll be another guest tomorrow. He's camping up at the scene of the last fire tonight. A uh, fellow by the name of Neil Wright. He was the director of the boys' camp, you know. Yeah, I've heard of him. Sorry, mate. I thought you were alone. Oh, that's all right. What is it, Louie? The North Fork Meadow just caught fire. Thought you'd want to go up. Good Lord, another one? Yeah, get the station wagon. <laughs> you can. Oh, hello, Jean. What are you doing out here in the dark? Waiting for you to come back. Is the fire out? Practically. After a lot of good meadow land went up in smoke. Oh, Ken, it's as though some horrible doom were hanging over the whole valley. Could be a man-made doom, you know. Neil Wright said something like that. Oh, but it couldn't be. It's too awful. There's no reason. Reason? The reasons people have for doing things are pretty incredible at times. Why did you come here? To fish. Don't you remember? Oh. I'd uh, better go in now. It's strange. But I feel so safe with you. I shall never forgive you for saying that. Oh. I didn't mean anything like that. No? Mean anything like that? Oh, Ken. Still feel safe? I don't know what I feel. At this moment, I'm not even sure of my own name. You could always use Jones. Better yet. Why can't I just sign with an X? Good night, Ken. Continue with Frigid Air's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. 
Wherever you live, you hear stories of Frigidaire dependability. In Scotia, New York, a Frigidaire refrigerator was carried out of a burning building and tossed into a ditch full of freezing water. Two months later, the owners simply connected it in their new home and it operated perfectly. Or take this family in Tacoma, Washington, the Fritz Swansons. They bought a Frigidaire refrigerator in 1928 and at last reports had been using it for 18 years. In all that time, repair bills amounted to exactly 80 cents a year. Yes, and if you want to know how much dependability goes into Frigidaire refrigerators these days, consider the meter miser. It's the meter miser that makes the cold in the Frigidaire refrigerator. And it's the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. Think of it. There are two simple parts in the compressor that move. And, of course, parts that aren't there just can't cause trouble or wear. Why, the meter miser is so simple in design, so efficient in operation, that it uses less current than an ordinary light bulb. Remember the stories you hear of Frigidaire dependability. Remember the meter miser that proves the dependability of Frigidaire refrigerators today. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by... General Motors. And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Mr. X has gone to the Maokai Valley to investigate a series of strange fires which destroyed a boys' camp and left 23 youths lying dead in its wake. Ken found a mixed welcome at the ranch last night, including a rattlesnake and a very interesting girl archaeologist. But now, it's the next morning. I'd give anything if I could take a day off and go along with you, Ken, but the way things are, I'm lucky to find time to eat. Well, let's hope the trout aren't quite that busy. little surprise that you're being up here this time of the year. Used to come up around August all the time. You don't have something on your mind besides fishing by any chance. Me, the chance to fish the Tamalkai is reason enough. How about those pools below the falls? They're still as good as ever? <laughs> Haven't had time to try them lately, Ken. Whatever happened to that dam they were talking about building when I was here before? Oh, that idea fell through long ago. Oh, I'm glad it did. I'd hate to see one of the best trout streams in this part of the country turn into a lake. Yeah. Well, uh, Ken, i got to be going. Would you like me to send Louie along with you? Thanks. I'm afraid we are temperamentally incompatible. He likes snakes. <laughs> I still can't figure out how that happened. Nor can I. Not yet. Well, I'll try to be here for dinner, Ken. Good luck. Thanks, Mead. That's one of the pleasures of fishing. You never know ahead of time what you're going to catch. I don't think that's a very good place to fish either, Mr. Thurston. Anyway, you just tried it a half hour ago. Quiet, Pega. I already discovered you're a total loss in the role of a piscatorial prophet. As a matter of fact, I don't think... Huh? But you may be right at that. We haven't had too much luck so far. Mr. Thurston, I don't understand what's, what we're doing. I don't know what you're doing, Pagan. I'm fishing. I mean, if we're on a vacation, why did we spend the whole morning tramping around looking at burned-up trees? And who did you send the telegram to? The chief, why? Nothing. Just wondered. You don't have to tell me what it said. Hagan, I asked him whether it's against the law out here to shoot somebody who keeps talking when you're trying to fish. Oh. I think someone's coming. It looks like you might be right. Oh, oh. Oh, steady. Steady. I'm sorry if I scared the fish. Well, they've been scared all afternoon. You by any chance, uh, Neil Wright? Well, yes, but... Uh... I don't believe I'm I've Ken ever... Thurston, and this is uh, Pagan Zellschmidt. Oh, how do you do? Staying up at the ranch with Mead Stewart. Oh, yes, yes. I'm moving in there myself this evening. I heard you had some pretty bad luck. <sighs> it's a tragedy. Any ideas about it? What do you mean? I understood you were of an opinion these fires might not be accidents. Mr. Thurston, opinions without proof can sometimes be dangerous. Yes. Yes. Pagan, hand me the creel. Uh, yes, sir. Miss Wagner tells me you're quite a woodsman, Mr. Wright. Yeah. Ever seen anything like this before? Uh -huh. 
Uh, yes. Yes, it's been burned, but that's what it was. The, the thing has various names in different places, sometimes called a dead match. Uh huh. You see, the Indians and early travelers used them before they had matches. They'd light this fiber core inside the clay tube, and the thing would smolder for hours. They'd use it to start a new fire in the next camping place. I'm afraid the idea's been put to other uses more recently. Uh, Mr. Thurston, where did you get this? After last night's fire at North Fork Meadow. If you don't mind, I'd like to take this with me. All right. I think I might have some information for you later this evening. I do business at all hours, Mr. Wright. Good, good. Come on. By the way, Mr. Thurston, you better be careful. Some of the holes in that river can be pretty treacherous. I remember that, Mr. Wright. Thunder's getting closer every minute. Looks as though we may be in for it, all right. Isn't Meade home yet? No, he phoned earlier, said he'd be late. Just you and I and the storm. I'm afraid we'll have to include your friend, Mr. Zelschmidt. He's around somewhere. What about your friend, Mr. Wright? If you're thinking anything, don't. Besides, he isn't here. Oh? Thought he was moving in earlier this evening. He did, but he went away somewhere alone just before dark. Why are you interested in him? I'm not particularly. I just mentioned he might drop around to see me this evening. That was close. Ken? Well, the one you hear never hurts you. No, but it reminds you there's probably another one coming. I, I think I'd feel much safer if... If what, Jean? If you'd do something like... Yes. Mine, Ken. Mine? I hope this thunder keeps up all night. Although I am beginning to get a little disturbed myself now. Did I hear say you saying something about being disturbed, Mr. Thurston? Hagon, why didn't you stay in the cabin? I was lonesome. Also hungry. Hmm. Matter of fact, I'm a little worried about the plane. With this storm blowing, I'm afraid it ought to be staked down a little more securely. Mr. Thurston, you're not going out in this rain. No, Pagon, I have the slightest intention of it. You are. Well, that's what I said. Th- <gasps> Plane taken care of? Mr. Thurston, I considered the whole thing nothing but a very dirty trick. You only wanted to be alone with that woman. Hagar, you didn't get wet. <laughs> you think I always sit on electric heaters? Who knows? Ah, uh, I don't see why you even bothered to come back here. This may be the reason now. Mr. Thurston! Mr. Thurston! Mr. Thurston! Mr. Hagar, turn on the lights. Well, whoever it was got away. Let's have the flashlight, Pagan. It's, uh, Mr. Wright. It was, while he was alive. He's dead, Pagan. But why should anybody want to kill him? Because he knew something, or they thought he did. Here, help me. Get him inside. Now, uh, firebug seems to be running true to type. First the burning of those youngsters, now... Shooting a man in the back. Wait a minute. Look at his shoes, Pagar. They're very muddy, Mr. Ray. Yeah, but the color of that mud, red. Uh-huh. I've only seen it in one place around here. You remember your gold mine, Pagar? Huh? You mean the tunnel in the side of the hill? Right. That show was nothing but that same red clay. Pagar, put on your pants and get the key to one of the station wagons for Miss Jean. Where are we going? We're going to find out what Neil Wright was looking for. I am. You can wait out here alone if you like. Mr. Thurston, I couldn't permit you to take such risks alone. Come on, then. Here we go. You think there may be rattlesnakes in here? Wait. Turn the lights over here. Somebody had a campfire, Mr. Thurston. Yes, and my guess is they used it to bake some little cylinders made of this red clay in the tunnel walls. You think Mr. Wright knew that? I think he suspected it when I showed him that dead match this afternoon. I think he came here to check his theory and was see or... Else he talked to the wrong person. Quiet, Pega. You hear anything? Hmm? A snake, maybe? 
put out the flashlight. Oh, well, Pig, on there goes our hit-and-run friend again. Come on. I've got a sneaking suspicion that shot wasn't meant for us. Uh, We're here, Pig, on near the entrance. Uh, Mr. Thurston, it's the foreman of the ranch. Yeah, Louis Clayman. Yeah, let's have a look. Thurston? Oh, not too bad, maybe, but he needs a doctor. Uh, Clayman, any idea what happened? Saw so you leave. Drive over here. Huh? Followed on foot. Yeah. Somebody in the dark. Who shot you? Did you see them? No. Too, too dark. I think he's unconscious, Mr. Thurston. Pay on, take the station wagon and get him to the doctor in the junction. Then meet me at the ranch. You know who's been doing it? I think I do. And I'm pretty certain I can even guess why. You can come on in here. Don't let anyone ever tell you the rain into Mount Kai isn't wet. Good. Hello, Mead. You're soaking. Where you been? Fishing. <laughs> when you ask a silly question. <laughs> uh, by the way, the station agent over at the junction called. He's got a telegram for you. Oh, good. I've been expecting one. Pardon me a second. Give it the depot, please. Hello, Ken Thurston speaking. I understand you have a wire for me. Yeah, read it, please, yes. Huh? Uh, no. No answer. Thanks a lot. Not bad news, Ken. That telegram was an answer to one I sent this morning. It contained exactly 23 words. The same as the number of kids who died in that fire. What were they? Proposed to Malkai Dam was approved three months ago. Oh. But information has not yet been released to public. However, word may have leaked out. So the worthless burnt-out land in the valley may not be so worthless after all. Good Lord, Ken, you don't suppose somebody... I mean, maybe... Why did you, why did you do it, me? Sorry, it had to be you that found out. So am I. No, me, that gun won't help you. I've gone too far to stop now. And there's one thing, Ken. I didn't intend to kill anybody in the beginning. It just happened. I didn't plan it. Neil Wright didn't die by accident. That was later. He accused me. Said he was going to you with it. I didn't have any choice then. I only meant to scare people so they'd leave the valley. What's the difference? When a man's greed becomes so great it causes him to forget every decent thing he's ever known, it's only one short step on the murder. Twenty-four people are dead because you murdered them. Too late to turn back now. There's got to be one more dead. You know that, Ken. It's a clean, swift stream into the Malkai. But it's going to be a long time before it sweeps this valley clean again. Wait, someone drove up. Yeah, I imagine it's Pagon, but the deputy sheriff I told him to bring back. No. They'll have to kill me first. Mead. Where's that youngster of yours? Still away at boarding school? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm going out this window, Ken. And I'm taking the gun with me. Don't try to stop me. I won't try. Goodbye, me. Oh, there you are, Mr. Thurston. Why, what's the matter? I just caught a murderer, Pagon, and turned him loose. Who? Mead Stewart. Turned him loose? That seems... Oh, I know. You think he'll come back? We're going to wait for him, eh? The Tamalkai River is flooded by the rains. And it's carrying a great many things out of the valley. Some are evil things. No, Pagan. Mead Stewart won't be coming back. Frigidaire star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. The Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. I invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. <laughs> And 
Now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And next week, I promise you another story filled with suspense and mystery. As usual, there'll be Leon Velasco along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's script is written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, it was nice to have an episode with the uh, commercials in. Definitely does fill out the length a bit. Obviously quite tragic for one of Ken's friends to turn out to be the uh, murderer, someone he'd actually known before and had a history with. So obviously it's not one that we've actually been able to hear. And it's interesting that he takes this case because, you know, I talk about how they're always concerned about how they justify their involvement. And in this case, it's not really tied to any of his apparent uh, portfolios in terms of dealing with international crime and espionage, but more just the pure human impact of what happened there. Now we turn to some listener comments and feedback. And we have uh, Carolyn who writes in, Hi Adam, thank you for the excellent program. And she's writing from Waterloo, Ontario, uh, Canada. Well, thanks so much for listening uh, up there in Canada. And I appreciate all of our uh, Canadian uh, listeners. According to the stats, about one out of nine of the uh, listeners to the great detectives of old-time radio are from up in Canada. Now, I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much to Stephen. Stephen's been one of our Patreon supporters since February of 2020. Currently supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support, Stephen. And that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Mystery is My Hobby. Next Saturday, we'll be returning to Indictment and bringing you a previously uncirculated episode of that program. And then next Wednesday, we'll be back with a previously uncirculated episode of The Man Called X. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.